Hello, how are you doing? My name is Otto and welcome back to another video. This is a video tutorial where I want to explain how to edit videos on your smartphone using the Insta360 app. This app is going to let you edit videos for the new Insta360 X3, the Insta360 ONE RS 1-inch one edition, the Insta360 X2, and any other camera from Insta360 that uses this app. The first thing to do is to download the Insta360 app to your smartphone. And before you start, I recommend to go to the settings and turn off this option called Shot on Watermark. To access your videos, you need to connect your camera to your smartphone by selecting the camera and then join the Wi-Fi on your camera. In this section, you can view all your videos and pictures. The ones with a circle shape are 360 videos or pictures, and the square ones are videos that were shot using a single lens or using the Mi mode. You can edit straight from the camera, but that will drain the battery on the camera. If you select this checkbox in the corner, you can select one or more videos. You can download them to your phone or select them as favorites. Over here, you can select to filter what you want to see on the list. For example, I can select to see only the pictures. Once you select a video, it will play automatically. To pause the video, you need to tap the screen once, and to play the video, you need to tap the screen once again. The left and right arrow will let you go to the next or the previous video. This down here is a timeline of your video. At the top, we have multiple settings that we can change, and at the top of the screen, these three dots will let you change some general settings. I recommend to have the flow state stabilization on, as well as this direction lock. Down here, turn on chromatic calibration and turn this logo option off. Here on the main menu, when you select the trim option, you will be able to trim down the video at the beginning or at the end by dragging the sides to the left or to the right. If you want to cut something out from the middle of the video, you will need to use Jump Cut. Here you need to select the portion that you want by selecting the start and then drag to select the end point. Press this icon to confirm and repeat the process to select another portion of your video that you want to keep. And now, all these gray areas are not going to be part of your video. Here you can cancel the selected area, or you can drag the sides to make this section bigger or smaller. Once you are done, press here to confirm and go back to the main menu. Over here, you can select the aspect ratio. 9 to 16 is vertical for Instagram, TikTok, and so on. 16 to 9 is for horizontal videos like YouTube, and 1 to 1 is a square aspect ratio for Facebook, for example. Clarity Plus will add some clarity to the video. You can turn it on or off. Color Plus will increase the brightness, but will also make the colors more vivid. You can slide this bar to increase or decrease this effect. Here you can select to add music to your video, but you can only select the songs that they have available. On the speed button, we can slow down or make the video clip play faster. For example, 16x is what you might want to use for a hyperlapse. Select a point in the video where you want the speed change to a start. Select the speed and now drag the timeline to the right or even to the left if you want to. This option will turn on or off the motion blur and once you are ready, you can tap here to finish. You can also do multiple speed changes by repeating the same process. And if you need to delete one of them, you can press the red line and then tap the trash can. To confirm and go back to the main menu, press this check over here. For multi-view, you need to go to the start point then tap on the small plus sign and drag the timeline to select the section of the video where you want to have the multi view. Tap the check icon and now you can select picture inside a picture, a split screen or car multi view. This over here will let you freeze a portion of the video and at the same time 
the camera can look around. To use this, you need to select a point in the timeline and drag the screen to select the starting position. Confirm by tapping this down here and now select where it's going to end and confirm down here. In the timeline, you will see this blue section and here you can select the duration of the freeze effect to 3, 5 or 10 seconds. This button here will let you take a snapshot of what you have on the screen. With face filter, you can apply beauty effects and with filters, you can select from multiple filters and select the intensity that you want to apply to your video. If you shot your video using a flat color profile, you can use this button to apply a lot to your video and color grade it. And over here, you can select this to adjust the exposure, color temperature, contrast, saturation, highlights, shadows, tone, and the sharpness of the video. The mark button will let you place small markers in the timeline like this. This will reset all the edits that you have done and this here will delete your video. Now, the interesting part about 360 videos is how you can move the camera around and for that, we're going to use keyframes and these keyframes are points in the timeline where you can select how the camera will behave. To place a keyframe, you need to tap on this yellow circle with a plus sign and to delete a keyframe, you need to select it and press the X. To move between keyframes, you can drag the timeline like this or you can tap on any keyframe like this. Once you place a keyframe, a new menu will appear over here. But before we take a look at that, you need to know that we can move the camera view around by dragging the screen like this. Pay attention to this yellow dot that you see over here. It indicates the direction where the camera will be pointing or looking at. So even if I move the camera and then I play the video, it will go back to the yellow dot. So, to change the view of the camera, you need to move that yellow dot. So we're going to use this keyframe that we have and now move the camera, for example, to the left. And now you need to press where it says update keyframe. Notice that now the yellow dot is over here and not where it was. So now if we play the video, the camera will be pointing in that direction. You can also play around with the camera movements by creating multiple keyframes. For example, you can create a new keyframe here, point the camera forward, update the keyframe, so now the camera will slowly turn towards the front. If you want the camera to turn faster, you need to place the keyframe closer to the previous one. And if you want the camera to turn slower, then place the keyframe a bit far away. A good tip to remember is that if you're adding a movement to a keyframe, the movement is going to start at the previous keyframe. I'm going back to the keyframe main menu and this button will let you select the field of view. We have tiny planet, ultra wide, wide angle, linear, which tries to eliminate the distortion from the wide angle, and then we have narrow field of view. To create the tiny planet view that we love so much, you will probably need to reposition the camera view. For example, here we need to drag the screen up and move the frame just a bit to frame the shot. And let's not forget to update the keyframe. If you want to change the field of view, you can do the same as we did with the movement. So create a new keyframe, select a different field of view, and then update keyframe and now the video will change from tiny planet to a wide field of view. Don't forget that this action will start from the previous keyframe. So if you want the tiny planet to last longer and then change the field of view, you need to create a second keyframe without any changes and this means that from this point to this other one, everything will remain the same. But now, from this one to this new one, we're going to change the view to ultra wide and change the view like this. I am back at the main menu for keyframes and this 
the viewfinder lets you edit the camera position by moving the phone around and also the field of view by dragging your finger to the left or the right and all of this has to be done while holding the red button. Deep track is the tracking system and here you need to draw a box on your subject. You can also open this submenu and select this if you want to center the subject. Now press start tracking to let the app do the tracking and when you're done, press stop tracking. Here you can select the tracking portion and change the field of view. And to delete the tracking that you did, you need to tap on the trash can. The other way to use deep track is by using these small targets. They are suggestions of what can be tracked and all you have to do is press on one of them and it will start the tracking process. The last movement that we can use here is the rotation. With this, you can rotate the camera as much as you want and to create a rotation animation, you can create a starting keyframe and then a second keyframe to set the final position like this. If you want to put together different video clips, you need to go to the story tab and up here select create a story. Here you can add different video clips and when you're done, press the next button. In this section, you will have most of the tools that I have mentioned in this video. You can also add music, you can add text, if you select where the two videos meet, you can add transitions and also select how fast or as slow you want the transition. If you leave the app or this section, you will find the video that you're editing here on the draft section. Once you have done all the edits that you want, we need to export the video over here. You can select to share the video to any platform that you want or to just save it directly to your phone gallery. I recommend using custom settings so you can select the resolution, frame rate if available, and the bitrate. If you want the highest quality for your video, you should select the highest resolution and the highest bitrate available. The final step is to press the export button and wait until the app finishes the task. If you're using a story mode, it's the same process to export, but you will get two more options. Color Plus will improve the dynamic range and Remove Grain will remove some of the noise in your video. On the Stories tab, you will also find what they call Shot Lab and this is where you will find multiple ways to make your videos more creative. Just select what you like from the preview and it will explain how to do it and once you have the video or videos ready, you press this button here and select them over here. Now it's time to practice all of this again and again. Please don't forget to like this video if this was helpful in any way. I hope you're having an amazing day and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.